What's up guys, it's your boy Ethan. Welcome back to another poker vlog and today we've got an exciting one. We're playing at Caesars. I think we're on the 2-5 and 5-10 wait list. So heard the 5-10 at Caesars was a good one, maybe. We'll find out. But so far, this Vegas trip has definitely treated us well and hopefully we'll continue to run hot. If we can smash 3K likes in this video, that would be huge and much appreciated. It only takes half a second for you guys. We're putting a lot of effort into these videos and if you can smash that like button, that'd be awesome. We're gonna hop in there and uh, hop into either the 2-5, 5-10 game, play at Caesars. And let's try to run it up. We hop into the 2-5, but that's a $500 max, and let's get into it. This is the first hand. We have King Jack of Hearts in the big blind. There's an under the gun limp, a middle position raised to $25, cutoff calls, button calls, and playing out of position in the big blind. We're only 100 bigs deep, and I'm really not sure how these players play yet. So instead of 3-betting, I just make the call out of position and the Unling Limper calls as well. We're going 5 ways to a flop, which comes Jack, 3-4, 2 diamonds and a heart. Action checks to the cutoff player, who throws out a bet of $25. He's a short stack with only $40 behind. Action folds to me, and obviously this isn't big enough, so I put in a raise, check raise it up to $80, expecting all the other players to fold and isolate against the short stack. And according to the plan, that happens. Everyone folds, cutoff makes the call for $65 total, and we're going to a run out. The diamonds brick out and we show our hand with King Jack. He takes a while to show or muck, but eventually ends up mucking, so we win the first hand of the day and take down a small one. About 20 minutes into the session, I look around the table and I notice a guy across the table in the 8 seat who has an index card with his preflop range charts for each position at the table. I tweeted this out and I just thought this was an incredibly wild thing that I saw and I had to share it on the vlog as well. I've never encountered this, but you've run into some wild things here in Vegas. So this next hand, we don't get involved with the index card guy, but we have Queen Jack of Diamonds in the small blind playing five handed. Action folds to me against the big blind. We open it up to 15 and the big blind calls. Flop comes queen, four, five, two spades and a diamond. With top pair here, certainly gonna go for value. I put in a C bet of 20 bucks. He decides on a call. The turn comes the 10 of diamonds. It's amazing. Beautiful card for us as we are improved to our flush draw as well. I size up to 65 and uh, unfortunately he folds. So not too much action here in the two five, but we get called for the 510 here and we play 25 for 54 minutes, in for 500, out for $601. Let's go to a 510 where there's a 2K starting stack and let's just rip into it. Immediately when we sit down, there's a player at the table with a $15,000 stack. That's right, that number is correct. 15K in front for a 2K max buy-in. Let's strap in because we also see a really big pot going on with Jack seven off suit in a four bet pot and he flops a straight. 5K pot in total as it goes all in on the flop. What the hell's going on here? We're not sure, but let's get involved. So this first hand of the 510 comes where we're card dead for 50 whole minutes and we haven't played a single hand. Picking up jacks under the gun, I open it up to $30, assuming I've got a pretty tight image at the table. Only the cutoff makes the call, and he's actually the same player who 4-bet jack-7 off suit, so we know sometimes he can get out of line. Flop comes king-7-4, two hearts here with jacks here, definitely going to put in a c-bet with only one card over our pair. I bet 25 bucks, and he makes the call. Going to a turn, which comes another king. Really good card for us, less likely he's got trips and probably just on some sort of 7x holding or heart draw. I size up to $75 on a good turn and once again, he makes the call. We're going to a river which is the 10 of spades. Really doesn't change anything as the heart draw bricks. And here, I don't think we can get three shoots of value against 7x anyways. So trying to target hands without showdown as he can certainly bluff, I check. He thinks for a while, goes over his options, but unfortunately decides not bluffing. He checks it back, we show our pocket jacks, and we scoop this one. Next notable hand, we're still a little bit card dead, but we find ourselves in a spot with 10-9 of clubs in the small blind. Action folds to me, I'm gonna open up this action to $30. Now the big blind three bets to 130. 
I'm really unsure how to play three bet pots blind versus blind, but considering how I've only played one hand in a whole hour, I think we can take advantage of a nitty image and put in a four bet out of position. So we size up to $300 and trying to just take down the pot now, but take control of it if we do see a flop. He doesn't do that because 300 is not too much for him. He grabs more black chips and puts in a five bet to $730. Well, there is no point in continuing now, unfortunately. This was a big punts of an entire 1-3 buy-in to a four bet bluff. I fold, let this one go, but man, that's $300 down the drain. After that punt, we have pocket eights in the cutoff. There's a plus one player who opens it up to $30. In position, we're gonna see a flop. I make the call, button folds, and now the small blind three bets to 170. The plus one player who originally opened folds, and this small blind player is the same guy who four bet with jack seven off. So given that information, and he also opened an early position with three six suited and defended against a three bet, we're gonna defend for 140 more with a pair and in position. Let's go to a flop, which comes Jack, Jack, Deuce to clubs. He actually checks to us, which I think is a really weird line. I really expected him to be C betting with his entire range here, but here definitely with a pair trying to protect my hand against really all holdings that he can be three betting with. I throw out a bet of $140, really expecting to take it down very often sometimes, but here in this instance, he calls for 140. Going to a turn, which is a pretty good one. It's the three of spades. And once again, he checks to me. Gonna play this a little bit standardly. I don't think I wanna value own myself against higher pocket pairs like nines or tens. So not sure what I can get value from as well. I just check back and see a river. The river's the five of diamonds and pretty much it's like the best run out we can ask for with pocket eights. Now uh, he decides checking for a third time is not gonna work. He puts in a bet of $500. I've seen him make pretty big river bets as bluffs a lot here, and I think with pocket eights, given how I played it, just gotta defend here, I think. Folding just seems a little too exploitative, so tossing a crying call, hoping he's got ace or king high or some sort, but nah, he just king high, but it's followed by another one with pocket kings. I guess I just ran into it here. We pay him off, and we're adding back on in for $3,000 now. This seems like a great time to talk to you guys about Webull. It's a commission-free stock trading app that you can use right from your phone. And best part is if you use my referral code in the link down below, you can get two free stocks up to $1,850. We're gonna open one up right now and let's see what we get. Looks like we've got some Zynga poker here. So um, that's always cool, free money. Uh, just made 10 bucks here from the free stocks. So use my referral code down below, get your two free stocks, and let me know in the comments below what you get. And back to the video. In this next hand, we pick up pocket eights once again in middle position. There's an unigun limp, and I'm gonna raise this up to $40 over the limper. The button, who is the same player from last hand, pretty loose and aggressive, three bets me again to $155. On the gun limper gets out of the way and folds. And once again with pocket eights, maybe we're running into some trouble. Not entirely sure, but I'm gonna call here out of position. Flop comes deuce three, five, two diamonds. Once again here, a pretty safe flop for pocket eights. So I check and play and flow. He throws out a bet of $200. And I think I've just gotta keep him honest, I guess. Not entirely sure, but uh, with a pair right now against someone who can three bet fairly wide, I call. The turn is the king of diamonds. I check once again, but really not a great card to see. And surprisingly, he actually checks back. So we're gonna see a free river, which is an ace. Pretty much the worst run out ever. Pocket eights sitting with pretty much nothing. I check, he tanks for a while and actually ends up checking back. So I show my hand, maybe we can be good here sometimes, but nah. He shows us pocket aces. So somehow this player who's shown down a sign offsuit and three six suited in three bet pots twice now has kings and aces against me. Unfortunate, but a really interesting and strange line for him to take with aces. All right, eights have not worked out for us this time, but for a third time in a row, can this work out in middle position here? There's an early position limp and once again, I raise it up to $40. And uh, once again, we face another three bet, this time from a different player. The cutoff three bets to $130, and it seems like we're just getting targeted every time we pick up eights. Well, it's not our turn to act just yet because the button now puts in a four bet to $410. 
Action folds to me, and now obviously we're just gonna have to get out of the way. Easy fold for us, but let's see what develops, because now the cutoff puts in the five bet jam of around $2,400. Massive pot. It seems like when we have eights here, we keep running into monsters. Onto the button facing a $2,400 jam, almost 2K more than the four bets. The button thinks for a while, ends up letting it go and folds. But um, yeah, pocket eights, not our friend this session. All right, we pick up something different this time. We looked at our ace queen offsuit in the cutoff, and action folds to me. I open it up to $30 and action folds to the big blind who makes the call. This is the same player we keep giving chips to but can play a wide range. Flop comes king 10 4 rainbow. He checks to us and most of the time with ace high here, I'm probably going to see bet this board texture but for some reason, you know, we just keep getting wrecked. I decide to just check it back and see a turn. The turn comes to 5, he checks and given this line so far with ace high, we should have decent showdown and we're going to check it back and see a free river. The river is the bink jack, that's beautiful, and guess what, even better, he 2x's the pot and puts in a bet of $125. Holy shit, what a dream, we Hollywood, but realistically, we're thinking, what's the correct sizing to raise to? We know we have to go pretty big, given he did just 3x the pot, but how big do we have to go to? I think about it for a while, and I think we just elect on a more value sizing because we really haven't won too many pots today and I don't want to get too greedy. I elect on a sizing of $480 and he doesn't take too much time before making the call. We show the nuts and win our second pot after three plus hours of playing 510. It's really nice to scoop this one, bink the river, and maybe the tides are changing and we can find a way to crawl out of the hole. So now in this hand, we have the Unengun straddle on, so we're playing much bigger stakes of 5, 10, 20. We're in the hijack with 6, 7 of clubs and action folds to me. I open things up to $60 here with the suited connector and we get the cutoff to make the call and he's playing fairly short stacked. Let's go to a flop which comes king, queen, nine, two clubs and a spade. Good flop for us for our perceived range. I put in a c-bet of $50 along with our club draw and he calls fairly quickly. Going to a turn which comes the five of spades two flush draws on the board now, and seeing that he's pretty short, uh, I'm trying to realize my equity even though we did improve to a gutter ball as well, I check. He bets out $150 and he's only got $600 behind and considering we're playing 5, 10, 20 this hand, he is really, really short. So with only 600 behind after this, I don't think I have much fold equity if I were to check jam in this spot. So if I hit, I think we can get stacks in. So I call 150, hoping to see a good river. The river is the sixth of diamonds, it's just brick city for our exact hand, and with a pair, I guess I have some showdown, I check. He's not going to let showdown go for free, he bets out $250, I guess I'm just out, uh, no way that we can hero this with essentially bottom pair. I fold, and we lose another hand, getting a little frustrated. Okay, this time we finally pick up another premium, pocket kings in the cutoff, and action folds to me. I open to 30, we get the button and big blind to call, so three ways to a flop. Flop is jack, seven, four, two spades, and on a pretty safe board for kings right now, we're definitely gonna put in the C bet when action checks to me, so I size the $65 here a little bit larger trying to charge draws. The button folds and the big blind makes the call. This is the same loose aggressive player we keep losing to. The turn comes a nine, he checks, and here I'm thinking surface level wise, not a great card, but really, it shouldn't change much besides Jack-9 or 9-7 specifically. If anything, it brings in a lot of combo draws that we can get value from. So definitely going to put in a second bet here to get value. And I stick to a sizing of 140, fairly consistent two-thirds pot. With this bet, uh, he doesn't take too long before making the call. So we're going to see what happens on the river. The river is an eight. This board just keeps getting more and more connected Really gross with a 4-liner to a 10, but for a third time, he checks. And given the past 3 hours of play that I've seen him, I'd assume he'd bet for value here if he had a straight or even 2 pair. Now, I think all 3 options are really valid here facing a decision on the river. Checking, betting small, or betting large. I've seen this player call really big river bets with 1 pair before, so I'm gonna hope he can do it again since we're stuck a bunch and we need to make up somehow. I throw out four black chips for $400.
It takes him about 30 seconds or so before arriving to a decision, which is a call. I show my hand, he mucks, and we win the third hand of the night, but this time it's nice to crawl back just a little bit and go for some thin value on the river. Strap in your seatbelts, boys and girls. This hand is a ride. Ace queen off on the button. There's a cutoff player who's a good buddy of mine, Nate. He opens it up to $30. Onto me, facing a cutoff open, we're definitely three betting this, so I size up to 125. The small blind next to act, cold calls my three bet. He seems to be a recreation player here for fun. So he calls, and uh, now back to the cutoff, he calls as well with 2K starting. We're going to a flop three ways, which comes king seven, three, two diamonds. Action checks to me, king high board texture should be pretty good for my three betting range. I also have the ace of diamonds. So when action checks to me, I think I got to see bet this and I size up to $130. The small blind snap folds, which is good, um, seeing that he did cold call my three bet. Not sure what that range is, but he's out of there. But Nate now in the cutoff makes the call. Going to a turn, which comes a queen. He checks and now onto me. Now, given that we've turned some showdown with a pair, not sure if we're good here too often, but I think we're just going to check back for pot control and see a river. The river is now the eight of diamonds. So front door flush draw does get there and we do block the nuts right now. Now he throws out a bet, which is a pretty darn big one to $500. Effectively, our second pair is really, really bad. And I think this really large bet here can be indicative of two pair, some sets, some baby flushes. I'm not entirely sure, but if there's ever someone that can fold out those really strong hands going for value on the river here, it's Nate. I've played with him a decent amount and here with $1,250-ish dollars effective behind, I think this is a really interesting spot for us as we know calling this bet is just lighting money on fire. We have a decision to either fold this, which is pretty standard, or we can attempt a very ridiculous bluff blocking the nuts because we know that there's one thing that he doesn't have and it's the nuts. I close my eyes and announce on... We essentially put all holdings into pretty gross and tough spots because this seems like a spot where no one's ever bluffing unless you're kind of a maniac like me. He tanks for maybe what seems to be like an eternal five minutes. He agonizes for a while. He says some stuff that hopefully the camera picked up. Hard to believe he checked back many other flush draws. Oh, this is so sick. This is a truly epic bluff if you're bluffing. Truly epic. I don't know anybody that could find a bluff here. But he ends up folding. Amazing. We muck. And we get this massive bluff through for $1,700. If he called, our session would have gone horribly. But it's nice to pick up this pot. And he later tells us he had king, queen, no diamonds. So he doesn't really block any of the flushes. We somehow win this pot. And we hear from Nate later on in the outro. So after that big bluff getting through, seems like things are going our way. And this hand with queen, 10 of diamonds on the button playing six handed. There's an early position open to 30. This hand works best as a flat call. I call and small blind big blind call as well we're going to a flop which comes jack eight seven two spades action checks to me and i've got the gutter to the nuts but i really don't like taking a stab at this we're going to take a free card and check to see a turn the turn comes the king of hearts so this is pretty good uh, we do improve to a gutter now so i'm definitely not going to fold to a bet small blind bets out 80 dollars. the preflop razor in early position calls and yeah like i said we're in position we're never going anywhere i call for 80 as well Let's see a river, which comes the ace of hearts, Bink City, sitting with the nuts. We're certainly going to be winning this one. Five hours in, we have won four total hands. It's about time we win our fifth. Even better, the small blind checks and the preflop razor bets $125. That's not enough for us. We want more money in here. We raise it up to $550. The small blind tanks. And when I mean tanks, he tanks for like three minutes or so and thinks about it, then makes a call, but he's all in for about $450 total. The preflop razor folds, gets out of the way. I show my hand, queen 10, the nuts is good against king jack. We take this pot down and wow, it seems like the tides have finally turned. Wrapping up the session, 
We're into my buddy Nate, who we did play a hand against. You got Nick, Nacho in the back. Say what's up to the vlog. Yeah, boys. What's going on, guys? So, Nate, let's hear it. So, How do you feel about this, uh, this king, queen versus ace, queen hand? I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know if I've ever been owned that hard in, oh. my, in my entire <laughs> life. I'm, at least to my knowledge. Uh, I mean, sure, maybe I've had somebody run uh, like an insane bluff against me, but oh. and maybe I've, I've made a crazy fold. But like, even if that happened, it wasn't like, in my opinion, they weren't, you know, truly good bluffs. Like your bluff, not only was it insane, and it that's, was a sicko play. Cool. I think, I think it was like insane. Maybe the greatest. Like, I, and I'm oh, not watching. Right. You gassing me too much. You gassing it's too, too much. much. All right, come on. Come <laughs> that's on. It was, it was a great play. It was a great. Uh, it was a fantastic play. Thank I mean, you for you're, you're welcome. Coming you're welcome. from Nate, that means a lot, bro. This kid just studs. Yeah, legit. Thanks, man. You're the only person I can pull that off against. So there's that. Maybe so, yeah. I guess you have some respect. Yeah, most people can't pull king queen there. I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was insane. Um, anyways, wrapping up the session. Uh, we played for like five and a half hours. We won a total of eight hands the whole five hours, uh, which is just dumb. At the lowest, down 2,000, we were in the game for 39, out for 47. So, good day, somehow battled back. And uh, the 2-5 also went well, up 100 bucks in an hour. So, hopefully you enjoyed this video. A lot happened. Leave a like on this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.